The bomb was an electromechanical device used by British cryptologists to help decipher the German Enigma machine encrypted secret messages during World War II. The initial design of the British bomb was produced in 1939 at the UK Government Code and Cipher School at Bletchley Park by Alan Turing. Turing was highly influential in the development of theoretical computer science, and he is widely considered to be the father of artificial intelligence. The bomb was designed to discover some of the daily settings of the German Enigma cipher machines on the various German military networks. It was employed extensively by Germany during World War II, in all branches of the German military. The Enigma machine was considered so secure that it was used to encipher the most top-secret messages. During the Second World War, Turing worked for the Government Code and Cipher School at Bletchley Park, Britain's codebreaking center. For a time he led HUT-8, the section that was responsible for German naval cryptanalysis. Here, he devised a number of techniques for speeding the breaking of German ciphers, including improvements to the bomb electromechanical machine that could find settings for the Enigma machine. Turing and the bomb played a crucial role in cracking intercepted coded messages that enabled the Allies to defeat the Axis powers in many crucial engagements and finally enabled them to win the war. This is all well known. However, it is a little-known fact that Germany had a similar computer pioneer and a similar supercomputer which was never used for code-breaking. Konrad Zuse was a German civil engineer, pioneering computer scientist, inventor and businessman. Zuse completed his work entirely independently of other leading computer scientists and mathematicians of his day. Between 1936 and 1945, he was in near-total intellectual isolation. After graduation, Zeus worked for the Henschel Aircraft Factory near Berlin. This required the performance of many routine calculations by hand, leading him to theorize and plan a way of doing them by machine. Beginning in 1935, he experimented in the construction of computers in his parents' flat. In 1936, he produced his first attempt, the Z1, a floating-point binary mechanical calculator with limited programmability, reading instructions from a perforated 35 mm film. In 1938, he finished the Z1 which contained some 30,000 metal parts and never worked well due to insufficient mechanical precision. The Z1 and its original blueprints were destroyed with his parents' flat and many neighboring buildings by a British air raid in World War II. In 1939, Zeus was called to military service, where he was given the resources to ultimately build his next project, the Z2. In the Z2, Zeus replaced the arithmetic and control logic with 600 electrical relay circuits, weighing over 300 kilograms. In September 1940 Zeus presented the Z2, covering several rooms in the parental flat, to experts of the Deutsche Versicksanstalt für Luftfahrt or the German Research Institute for Aviation, Germany's Aerospace Research Institute. In 1937 Alfred Teichmann a university professor became the head of the statics department at the institute, where he worked on flutter calculations and operational strength tests. Teichmann promoted the development of Konrad Zeus's computers in the course of his work at the DVL and helped to fund the successor model, the Z3. In 1940, the German government began funding him and used his work for the production of glide bombs. Zeus built special computing machines, which were purpose devices which computed aerodynamic corrections to the wings of radio-controlled flying bombs. These machines contributed to the development of the Henschel HS-293 radio-guided glide bomb, which was the precursors to the modern smart bomb. Zeus helped to create a computing device for calculating the vibration characteristics of various components and assemblies of this weapon. In 1941, Zeus improved on the basic Z2 machine, and on May 12, 1941 Zeus presented the Z3, which was also built in his workshop. The Z3 was a binary 22-bit floating-point calculator featuring programmability with loops but without conditional jumps, with memory and a calculation unit based on telephone relays. The telephone relays used in his machines were largely collected from discarded stock. Despite the absence of conditional jumps, the Z3 was a Turing complete computer. However, Turing completeness was never considered by Zeus, 
who was totally unaware of Turing's work and had practical applications in mind. The Z3 was completed in 1941 and was faster and far more reliable than the Z1 and Z2. The Z3, like its predecessors, stored its program on an external punch tape, thus no rewiring was necessary to change programs. However, it did not have conditional branching found in later universal computers. Later Zeus moved on to the Z4 design. The Z4 was arguably the world's first commercial digital computer, and is the oldest surviving programmable computer. The Z4 was very similar to the Z3 in its design but was significantly enhanced in a number of respects. The memory consisted of 32-bit rather than 22-bit floating-point words. The program construction unit punched the program tapes, making programming and correcting programs for the machine much easier by the use of symbolic operations and memory cells. Numbers were entered and output as decimal floating point even though the internal working was in binary. During 1944, Zeus was working on the Z4 with around two dozen specialists. Some engineers who worked at the telecommunications facility of the German High Command also worked for Zeus as a secondary occupation. Also in 1944 Zeus planned to manufacture 300 computers. To prevent it from falling into the hands of the Soviets, the Z4 was evacuated from Berlin in February 1945. When the roar of the approaching front could already be heard, the computer was transported with a military truck to southern Bavaria, where Konrad Zeus met Wernher von Braun. While working on his Z4 computer, Zeus realized that programming in machine code was too complicated. He started working on a PhD thesis, containing groundbreaking research years ahead of its time, mainly the first high-level programming language, Plankical, Plan Calculus, and, as an elaborate example program, the first real computer chess engine. When World War II ended, Zeus retreated to Hinterstein in the Alps with the Z4, where he remained for several years. In the extreme deprivation of post-war Germany Zeus was unable to build computers. It was not until 1949 that Zeus was able to resume work on the Z4. While Zeus never became a member of the Nazi party, he is not known to have expressed any doubts or qualms about working for the German war effort. According to several sources Zeus openly stated more than once that the motivation for his scientific activity was to strengthen the military power of Germany so that it could give a balanced response to such phenomena as the bombing of Dresden by Anglo-American aircraft, which, according to the scientist's opinion, was absolutely meaningless from the point of view of military effectiveness and as a result of which, mainly, the civilian population suffered. According to the scientist, the more bombs fell, the more persistently and intensively he and his subordinates worked. Because of his alleged Nazi affiliation Zeus was not allowed to get back into the computer industry until the 1950s. In 1958 he produced the Z22, the first commercial electronic digital computer produced in Germany. The Z22 used vacuum tubes, a relatively late date for that technology, as most American computer companies switched to solid state by 1957. Zeus's company became the first independent German electronic computer company. It was eventually purchased by Siemens. Unable to do any hardware development, he continued working on Plankical, eventually publishing some brief excerpts of his thesis in 1948 and 1959. The work in its entirety, however, remained unpublished until 1972. Between 1987 and 1989, Zeus recreated the Z1, suffering a heart attack midway through the project. In 2009, the Deutsches Museum restored Zeus's original functional model. I hope you enjoyed this episode and to make sure you don't miss my future work, please make sure you are subscribed to my channel and press the bell notification button. Thank you and see you in the next video.